All right, buddy. So what's your name and where are you from? So my name is Sergio Kwan, and I'm from California. And to be exact, right now I'm in Bakersfield. Well, look, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you came my way on Instagram, how most most people come my way. And uh, if you all have a story that y'all want to tell, don't, by all means, go to my Instagram. But uh, you came at me with a story. You said you, you ain't done no prison time. No prison mm -hmm. time for you. You went to jail. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, L.A. County, uh, you know, how was that? Oh you know, uh, man, LA County, you know, um, there's definitely like pretty rough politics there. And being the only, like being the only Asian or maybe like the only other Asian inside whatever dorm that I was in, it was definitely pretty intimidating and just trying to maneuver that and just trying to figure out how to keep my nose clean and, you know, and all that stuff was definitely an experience for sure. Okay. Well, what the hell sent you to LA County, man? What sent you to jail? You don't look like, you know, I'm not... Over here, I'm not judging a book by its cover, but you don't look like a you know stone cold gangster or nothing. You know definitely, what I mean? So, definitely not. No, okay. I'm not affiliated with any gangs, but um, yeah. I just got mixed up with the wrong crowd. Um, some of those guys were in gangs, but I never joined one officially uh -huh. or anything like that. Mainly, it was just because of the drugs that I was doing out on the streets. Um, to be more exact, it was methamphetamine, and I was hooked on meth for a real long time and shooting oh, really? it up. Yeah, shooting it up and everything. So that led to a whole crime spree of just burglaries, robberies, fraud, and stuff like that. And that's what got me locked up into Los Angeles County Jail. Man, I bet you got stories for days. Days. It's kind of uh... weird. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Well, let me ask you this, man. Let's back it up. I know I want to hear about L.A. County and all that good stuff, but okay. how the hell did you get introduced to meth, man? Tell me that. Okay, well, it started with weed. I was smoking weed. Oh. Yeah, of course. So All scary. of us uh, yeah. weed supporters hate to hear that. You know? <laughs> I know. It's the, it's the cold <laughs> truth. It was started yeah. off with weed. And then uh -huh. um, just, um, but you know what? I was going through something personally. I was going through a breakup when my weed addiction or weed habit started. Mm -hmm. And maybe that attributed to me being like, you know, dependent on substances. So I graduated from weed to ecstasy and then went away from ecstasy to coke and then from cocaine and went to meth and then just kind of just escalated, just searching for that stronger high every time. And at the time, um, when I started getting deep into meth, I was kind of going homeless at the time. And like the, um, I guess the highs of meth was like appealing to me, like not having to eat, being homeless, not having to sleep if I didn't have a place to sleep. So that definitely fueled my addiction more. And um, yeah, it was... It was a lot stronger than all the other drugs. And especially when I started shooting it up, it changed the entire game. My whole mind got messed up. And oh, yeah, it went off the deep end, definitely. So the thing that I actually went to jail for that I could talk about without incriminating myself would pretty much be a residential burglary. That's what got me arrested into jail. Um, that was the crime that I went down for. And um, I got caught because of my fingerprints being at the crime scene. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's what happened. Um, that was the main charge that I went to jail for. Everything, all the other crimes or whatever, like, I mean, it's all, hey, not, it's all, it's it's all water under the bridge, my yeah, friend. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, it's all water under the bridge. And you put that on a t-shirt, you know. Uh, but damn, I mean, okay. Well, let me ask you this before we get into jail. Let okay. me hear one of the wildest moments that you could probably remember from. Uh, you know those those dark days the dark days okay the, well, the dark days man okay probably one of my wildest moments was the day that i got arrested and actually got caught up because i was actually awake for maybe two or three days at the time and i was getting pretty delusional so it was it, everything is in a blur like chronologically i can't put everything in order because you know when you stay up for that long you kind of just lose track of time but i've during, never stayed up that long yeah, you kind of just... Is that what happened? Explain it to us. What is it like staying up for three damn days straight, man? Okay, so, like, the days <laughs> the, the days are just bleeding into each other. You're watching the sun go up. You're watching the sun go down. And then you start to forget what you actually did on that day. Or was it yesterday? Or was it two days ago? And you start getting confused. And, like, you just, like, the sleep deprivation is definitely a thing. You start to see stuff, like, little bits of, like... My, my, my visual hallucinations were definitely kicking in a little bit more on the third day and like just hearing a lot of things, like just a lot of auditory and visual hallucinations for sure. Staying up for that long and paranoia, of course. Um, I also had a warrant for my arrest during the time. So I was really just like on edge, like 
smoking, like shooting meth, paranoid, running the streets, up for three days, avoiding the cops, and just trying to, you know what I mean? It was um, it was chaotic. I mean, like when you shot up, want if you shot up, where you would it take away the uh, hallucinations for a little bit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it would actually get crispy clear for like maybe like thirty minutes, and then. When, you know, when that high starts to wear off, it's like uh, all the stuff starts to come back. You're just like, ooh, and you start Star feeling, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Dang. That's crazy, man. <laughs> all right, so you get locked up. You're on a three-day, you're up for three days. You get hemmed up. How was it going to jail and coming off of that shit just cold turkey, man? Oh my LA County at that, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, this is not no easy task, I must say. And no. Asian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, let's not forget about that one. You know, over here, we wouldn't even think about that. You know what I mean? You just going in. <laughs> okay, all I could think about was finding somewhere to lay down and sleep during processing, during the booking process, during the any time that we were sitting down and waiting, I just had to sleep. Like, there, uh, my body was just done. I would wake up, eat my little bag of food they gave me, like the peanut butter sandwich with a cookie in the milk, eat that and go right back to sleep. And that was my, th th I was just sleeping the entire time and I was just feeling depressed extra nobody tired. was messing with you or nothing or was this just in booking not this in was just population? this was just in booking yeah how this, long were you in uh booking for booking took about a day and a half because of like the traffic and everything so i didn't have a bed for a day and a half inside la county so that was rough yeah <laughs> yeah and then um basically it took a day and a half and when i finally got into gp um i got sent to wayside which is by castaic by six flags out here in california Mm -hmm. and I got sent to a dorm living out there and I was still coming down. It was like my second to third day in and that's when the, a riot popped off while I was still coming down off of the drugs, like inside of the dorm. And I just got caught in the mix of it. And what was the name of this place again? It's called Wayside Supermax. Um, Wayside Supermax. Super, yeah. It's, so, I mean, is that considered like LA County? It's, it's LA County Jail. So there's LA County downtown, which is called Men's Central Jail. And that's okay, where yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, MCJ, okay. that's where everybody goes. And then like once you get processed in, you a lot of people go to Wayside because that's where all the beds are. Like the dorms, the multiple dorms, multiple floors. So unless you become a worker within M MCJ your first day or two in, you get sent to Wayside. So a lot okay. of people that do time go to Wayside. Okay. okay yeah, that's okay. what happens. All right, so uh, you're in there. You're just trying to get some sleep. You're in booking, and you say you're coming off the drugs. You're about to uh, – a riot pops off. Mm -hmm. How the hell did this riot pop off? Explain this to me, man. Okay, so this is what happened. And what the hell did you do? God, yes. I can only imagine. <laughs> okay, so I got – this got broken down to me after it happened, but how the riot popped off was – there was, um, you know, those little sockets. And, you know, when people want to smoke a cigarette, they put two pencil leads in each socket. They put it yeah. in the middle and it creates a spark. Yeah. So, but in, in, in Wayside, there's only one socket in the dorm. And that's like way up top um, by the TV. And the TV is like hung from the air. So there's a, there's a socket up there. But the only way to reach that socket is to have a man boost you up. I'd say about 10 feet. Yeah, high, not, not too high where you can't reach it without a boost. But like yeah, yeah. you're on your toes trying to get yeah, to it. Yeah. So they're trying to do that. I think it was around like 11 o'clock at night when that was happening, when like it was, there was no program. Everybody was supposed to be asleep and everything. And the deputy that was at the bars saw what was going down. And it was the brothers that were doing this, the, the blacks who were yeah. trying to get the cigarette going. So they got the program shut off because of this. So there was no more canteen for that whole week or for until further notice, there was no TV, there was no phones. There was nothing. So there was a lot of tension that happened because of their decision to smoke a cigarette. Okay, well, let's reverse it. Let's reverse this Cadillac now. You get into the cell block, okay? Is it segregated to an extent? I mean, they're not putting no white guy in a cell with a black guy, correct, in this jail? In the, okay, so within the cells, no, you're not getting put. You get in, in MCJ, you get put with your race or whoever you're rolling with. So if you're rolling yeah. other, you're rolling with black. So if you're rolling, if you're rolling wood, then you roll with either woods or southsiders. So they put you accordingly to definitely, yeah, to avoid problems and stuff like well, that. Well, explain to me this other situation. Is there white guys in the other car in this jail? Other car, you know, anybody can claim other. Because, yeah. like, you know what I mean? Because it's either yeah. Asians, Egyptians, Armenians, um, a couple other races that, that go by other. And um, it's just it's just an official car within the L.A. County. The others don't exist other, like, in other counties or anything like that? 
Not over here in Virginia, man. So is no, it just no. an Asian car? Like, what do you guys call it? No. There ain't no cars. There's, there's a... just there's just a population and oh. gangs. That's it. There's okay. really no no segregation at all. Uh, it's pretty it's pretty damn wild. That's why I'm asking you all this stuff because that's how different it is. But uh, damn. All right. So you're in this jail and it's segregated. Where the hell? Who they throw you in a cell with for uh for your first day in? First day the, in the um... main population. Well, the main population the MCJ, I got thrown in with another another brother, a, a older black gentleman, and um, he was just telling me like how to keep my nose clean and everything like that because I, I had a lot of questions for him, obviously because it was my first time. I can only but, imagine. You know what God, I, saw? I, I, was I just, can see <laughs> you in the cell right now. Yeah, I was just like, oh man, so what? What? What's to expect? Like what? You know? And he, I was talking his ear off <laughs> for sure, and yeah, he yeah. was just trying to get some sleep. Just he was, it wasn't his first time for sure. He was uh-huh. just breaking it down to me like, yeah, man, just, you know, just be respectful. And it's not, it's not as crazy as you think. Just, you know, don't be a weirdo and you'll probably be all right. And just t- telling me pointers and stuff like that. You'll probably be all right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Did he, did you, I mean, was there, what were some of the questions you were asking him? Um, honestly, like when, uh, how court goes and like, what can, what can I expect with my case? If he's ever known anybody that had a similar case to mine and typical oh, questions, typical, yeah. Que- yeah, just trying to figure out how much time I'd be looking at, or just some type of like, you know, secondhand experience for somebody else that's been through it. Maybe, um, I was also asking them like how to like the program is in wayside because I knew that I was going to get transferred to race wayside. And the idea of dorm living was kind of you know intimidating to me so i was just like what can i expect how many people like what are the rules and he couldn't really break it down to me because dorm to dorm the 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 rules within that dorm are different so he's just said like you just got to go there and just like get with your rep which is a person that runs your pod and he will break it down on how not to you know get messed up and just stay out of trouble and see that to me is crazy because you don't have nobody in and a lot of my viewers that have been watching this watching my interviews since day one know this already but a lot of people don't understand you know prisons i've been in you walk into there's nobody there no rep and no list of rules or regulations or functions at all they just throw you in there and that's it you know? wow you, yeah so you 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 just gotta fend for yourself right off the break so that's i mean it's just wild to hear that. I mean, did someone come up and talk to you? Yeah, every time every time I went to a different dorm because I I changed dorms a lot because I worked like four different jobs within the jail during my time there. So each each time you get a different job, you're putting a different dorm with those corresponding workers. And they but, make you do these jobs, right? No, you you choose actually. If you if you work within the jail, you get a lot of incentives. So like there's a there's a plus, okay. Yeah. Okay. So there's a real big benefit to being in a trustee dorm. And what trustees is is basically workers. It's just a yeah. name for workers. But yeah, you want to get so every time you go to a dorm that's not a trustee dorm, there's different rules. So when you go in, the rep approaches you he asks you what car do you run in what what do you are you an other are you a, are you a brother are you a woods outsider and then when you tell them what you roll with they assign you your bunk but you, but you have to um you get assigned a bunk from the jail system but then you don't go by that bunk system they tell you where to sleep like no your bed is over here and when we do head count you switch bunks with the other person so like the the jail system just like kind of places people wherever, but then the inmates take it upon themselves to put like segregate the uh, bunk situation amongst races. Okay. okay. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. And it's kind of, it's pretty much allowed. It's just a normal normality in there. Yeah. Yeah. As, but as long as you're not in the wrong bunk, when they do head count, then you're fine. But if you are in the wrong bunk, then you're probably going to get in trouble by the, by the, by the deputies. But that's just how the inmates run it. And they like to just be segregated amongst themselves and everything. I mean, did you come in with your mat and everything, or did he find you? Because uh, he placed you in a, someone placed you in a bunk. I'm guessing, or you didn't have to choose for yourself. No, yeah, um, like you come in with your bedroll and everything and all your stuff, and then they tell you, okay, your bunk's gonna be over there, and then whenever you do head count, your your assigned bunk is over there, so you got to switch before they do that head count. And that's just the way they do it in there. Damn, I wonder how many people walked in and said, "No, nah, I want to sleep over here." <laughs> It's pretty wild, man. They even have a time. Those are the ones people remember, my friend. (laughs) (laughs) How the hell no? I'm going in that cubby over there, man. I want that cubby away from that light. I'm not doing this shit no more. Definitely. (laughs) I get get my boots smoked. You know what I mean? 
<laughs> no, no, no. You got to learn to adapt, ladies and gentlemen. Do not uh, take that advice in no way, shape, or form. But uh, that's crazy. Okay, so, I mean, you're running with others. Was there any other Asian guys in there? I mean, how yeah, was um, At one point, I did get into a dorm where I met one of my friends. And he's another Asian guy. And we were in the dorm together for a while. And that was great. But um, throughout my entire time there, like when I got rolled out to different dorms, because I did get fired a couple of times from – the jobs that I was working at for, for just what'd not... you do, man? What'd you do? You stole some stuff? I did. I sold a block of cheese from the kitchen. Oh, is that a block of cheese? <laughs> the crafts, the big, the big block of crafts, cheddar, <laughs> the cheese. Um, somebody tell offered me. me like tell a... me about it, man. Let's hear it. Yeah, so I was working in the kitchen um, as an ODR, and ODR is basically cooks for the sheriffs, and um, uh-huh. they get they get access to like food from yeah. the outs. You know what I mean? So somebody was like, "Hey, man, like." bring back a block of cheese. I'll throw you like 20 soups and a couple other, you know, like chincharones and like a summer sausage. And I was just like, chincharones. What's that? It's like those um, pork rind skins. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. You know, those pork rinds. All right. Yeah. So he, he, he offered me that and I was like, done. I'll get you that block of cheese. I tried, I tried to smuggle it back with me before we went upstairs. And I guess a block of cheese going missing is kind of obvious. And I got, they, they searched everybody. They, how did he find out that you worked around a block of cheese? What do you mean? The sheriff? No, the guy that wanted the block of cheese. In the kitchen dorm, there's there's two sides. There's one side of regular people that cook for the inmates. And then there's a side where you cook for the sheriffs. These are two different yeah, yeah, work. Yeah. But then we're in the same cell unit like block area. Okay. So you, you guys can get kites or you guys can still communicate like on the way to work. Like you guys are kind of walking by each other. So you know, you network and you just say, Hey, can you get me a block of, you know, whatever. And then. Oh, so how. it was more of like, uh, uh, Hey, you trying to make some, make some money type thing and you're yeah. down to do it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to, I'm trying to think, okay, maybe someone tried, you know, pushing up on you and you really didn't want to do it, but you did it, you know, that type of shit. Oh, okay. I get you. It wasn't nothing like that. It, it wasn't, it wasn't like that. It was just me okay. trying to get something. He's trying to get some cheese. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Everybody trying to get some cheese and soups and all kinds of shit. Okay, yeah, I mean, I got caught up stealing jalapenos and <laughs> coffee grounds from the faculty lounge because I was buffing floors. Oh. I'm trusty at one point. Uh, crazy stories, crazy times, and that and that little quick trusty stint of mine. But uh, okay, so you got caught stealing a block of cheese. What happened with that? Did you go to the hole for a couple of days? They went kicked the you off hole. trusty? Yeah, it kicked off trusty, went to the hole for a couple of days. And at this point, I was still in men's central jail as a trusty. I got chosen to be a trusty immediately once I got there. And then um, I got fired and I got rolled up to Wayside. <laughs> and you got some jobs there, I'm guessing. Yeah, once I got to Wayside, I had to wait like a week before I could apply again. But once uh-huh. I applied, I got accepted into the laundry dorm. <laughs> Hire him again, boys. Let me give, <laughs> give him another chance. Okay, you get fired for again too, don't you? I do get fired for the. Oh, one. okay. Let's. Okay. I gotta hear this, man. Okay. So, um, I'm, you know, I, I'm like, okay, I'm in the trustee dorm. This is cool. At the dorm that I was at, there was no politics, so I, I was having an okay time. But yeah. once we got to work, I just, it was just too much laundry. Like it was a lot of oh heavy, a lot of laundry, just clothes, like just a room filled with bags like to the to the roof and you I have bet to you can smell that room still to this day can't you disgusting yeah <laughs> disgusting it's... so yeah i did it for two days and i got burned out and then on my third day i just decided not to go to work that day I, like when everybody lined up to go to work i just stayed in bed and i was like nah i'm not gonna go and you know of course that doesn't fly with them you're like no if you don't want to work then get the fuck out of this dorm so yeah yeah they, yeah, they fired me. I went back to general population. And from there, I had to wait another week before I got to apply again. And then my friend who was in another dorm as a buff, one of the trustee positions, you work buffing floors. That's he, a good job too, ain't it? Definitely. The, one of the yes, best it, jobs. Definitely. Yes, it is. Your friend was a buffer? Yeah, he was, a, he, was a, he was working as a deck trustee, basically the guy that buffs the floors. And he had a little bit of juice. He's been there for maybe a year. And... Like the deputies uh, that work his pod really like him. So he was just like, you know what? Like put in a re- request to get applied to this dorm and I could probably get you in if I give them a good word. So that's what ended up happening. I got to his job and we started working as like janitors together, like buffing the floors and around the whole system and, you know, doing yeah. little deals with the pod, pod. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you got a little spray bottle with you? 
Yeah, definitely a little spray bottle. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I had that shit like a gun. I walk around with that shit like a gun. I was a buffer for like, I don't know, man. Maybe a week, two weeks tops. I can't even remember, but it was a short lived, but man. It was fun. I had a blast. <laughs> yeah. Going all throughout the jail in the middle of the night. I'm talking about two thirty in the morning. I'm walking around from block to block. The shit was it was a good job, man. Yeah, it's awesome. It really gets you out, like just Dang. out of that out of that freaking dorm or cell or whatever you're in, you know what I mean? Just walking. Yep. yep. Told me to buff them faculty cafeteria. That was the wrong thing for them to tell me, man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see anything crazy? Any kind of uh, wild situations in there? Yeah, no? a lot. A lot. Um, because um, the Southsiders uh, and the Sudenos, they they run a real strict program there. So like, they have to be up by six or seven, and they have to be programming. And there's a lot of people that buck the system, like who just don't want to, who don't want to be up. And like, you know what I mean? So. There's, you see a lot of people getting packed out. You see a lot of people getting three man squads against them. You see, you know, just a lot of fights under the stairs. It's all controlled though, and you're not supposed to look. You just gotta, everyone's told you just, you know, mind your own business while it's happening. But definitely, you can hear the stomping. Like, yeah. and it, it's on the regular. Like, the people are getting DP'd and people are doing, not, not, not making the right decisions and, you know, paying the consequences for it all the time. It's such a dense population of people. Like, shit is going down all the time. That's wild, man. Yeah. Uh, did you see a lot of people checking in? Uh, what, what do you mean by that? Like, uh, leaving because they're in fear? Like, going to the CO saying they're scared for their life or anything like that? Yeah, definitely. People going to the bars and going to PC and stuff like that. And just, like, trying to get out of that dorm. Um a lot of gang members that a lot of gang members who couldn't like hang with with the, with the dorm that they came into. I've seen that happen too. Just a bunch of people like, yeah, definitely going to the bars and getting the fuck out of the dorm, rolling themselves up. Yeah, yeah, that's wild, man. Um, but it sounds like you know it's pretty structured, and if you are a solid individual and you kind of follow the ropes, I guess you could say you'd be all right, right? Definitely. If you're not getting a debt, if you're not gambling and like cracking up a debt with anybody or just, you know, like as long as you know how to follow the program and like just being respectful, you should be fine. Like, of course, on the off chance of a riot happening, you really can't do anything about that. But like just like maneuvering around your dorm and like the program, it's not hard. And if you're respectable, like you got some knuckleheads in there, but the most of the people in there just want the dorm to be pretty chill and like let time pass pretty chill so they can just go home, too. So. You get a couple of doors where it's kind of active and that really depends on what floor you get set on. But if you're in the 600 to 500 floors where I was at mainly, it's pretty chill. That's good, man. Yeah. Uh, well, did I don't think you ever said exactly what did you do when the riot popped off? What'd you do, man? I was Okay, so I was asleep. You kind of just ducked off or what? Yeah, I was asleep. Um, I wake up to somebody punching me in my face and then I'm in. So, Wait, what? Yeah, while I'm in the bunk. While I'm in the bunk. Okay, and you're in the who's your celly? Black there, dude? No, this is this was a dorm. I was okay, in the Okay, yeah, okay. So yeah. you're just sleeping in a bunk. Yeah, and it's a triple bunk, so it's three man bunks, and I'm in the middle bunk. And there's one person above me and one person below me. And I'm in the middle. And um yeah, I just wake up to somebody punching me in my face and then I feel somebody grabbing my feet and then they pull me off the bunk, off the middle rack, and then I'm on my back. And then he proceeds to there's this he see he slashed me in the face right here with the little razor blade and then he cashed me and i feel the blood rushing up and i just i get up and i'm not i'm panicked out like i'm not even thinking and then i just just trying to maneuver and i'm like black guy white guy no it was it was mex it was uh mexicans okay it was a uh, mexicans versus the blacks and others riot because the blacks got the program shut off the mexicans decided to buck and like pretty much attack oh, so if something happens with the blacks the others have to be there too 100 percent. if you're not if you're not in action then you get dp'd if, if you're if you're seen like you know like not doing anything you're gonna get checked later like you you guys roll together so by if, the blacks yeah by the yeah by the blacks so the blacks will dp you if you're not doing what you need to do type deal so, so it shouldn't even be called others it should just be you're rolling with the blacks <laughs> i don't know yeah pretty much but that's what happens so I, don't know. I mean does that make sense to you it does make sense to me it does if, if let's, I'm, just, let's just squash that whole, that whole car, man. All right, let's just put it in there. You know, there ain't no need for that. I mean, at least in that jail. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just that jail. That's probably why. I don't know. Uh, I'm not from the West Coast, so that's wild, man. Um, 
I mean, what'd you do? I mean, did you did you fire off on dude? Did he chase definitely, you down? Definitely, definitely not. He chased. I got up, and then I'm 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 in a panic stage, so I'm just trying to get the fuck away from the chaos. And then I'm walking towards the bars, telling the deputies, like, dude, I need to get out of here. Like, this is this shit is wild right now. So, and then when they see that, when they see me come up to the bars with like blood all over my face, they 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 shut that whole thing down. Riot squad comes in, you know, everyone's put down and everything like you know it's controlled i get pulled out and a bunch of other blacks get pulled out and then you see a couple you see get everybody getting their knuckles checked and i'm outside of the dorm looking in from the other side of the bars because i'm obvious i have the injury and just just had to get the f out of there dude had to get so the you just ran there. man you yeah had, just... you ran you just ran and you had nothing to do with anything nothing. you just part of the Part of the Others. chaos, yeah. Part of yeah, because I'm rolling with them and sit. And th there's a heavy, like, pressure on Southsiders to be seen in action. So if you're not seen doing something while you, other people are doing something, you're kind of you're gonna get you know DP too. So I I understand why. Yeah, they, I kind of hear that about all sides. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know what I mean. So they had to they had to be seen in action so i mean like there was only about six black guys within that dorm so everybody's trying to be seen doing something and that leads to everybody getting a piece of the action including myself who was asleep including an asian guy yeah including me yeah yeah man, <laughs> they do that for you man <laughs> It was messed up, dude. It was messed yeah, it up. It was, man. I mean, was that probably your wildest moment in there? Hundred percent, the most wildest moment. I had to get stitches. I was in the hole for four days after that, recovering, and just yeah, in the hole with the gash in my face, and you know the jail. How much system, time did you have left after? Oh, I was still fighting my case. Oh man, that's the worst. Then you yeah, were in a shitty yeah, situation, was, man. Yeah, I was just like, man, I don't know what's going on and stuff like that. So I didn't know when I was getting out. I still had court dates and. It was just a shit. It was just a shit. You know, it's terrible. It's terrible. That's crazy, man. Yeah. Well, how long you been out? I've been out for, man, for four years now. Excellent, man. So four, you, moved, yeah. you, you put all that bullshit behind you, I'm guessing. Behind me, yeah. I'm originally from L.A., but um, I got sent to a rehab out here in Bakersfield. And after I graduated, I just stayed put and just started a life out here. Stayed away from my old friends and just tried to figure it out. <laughs> Wes, what's up, man? Uh, yeah. Well, before we leave, uh, well, you got something going on, don't you? You got a YouTube channel you're about to start up, right? I, I do have a YouTube channel. Um, I don't know about a whole link. I could probably send you that later, um, like my actual Well, link. I can get it if you, you know, I'll talk to you a little bit later. But you, you do have a YouTube channel for people to come over there and check out? I do. Um, I'm, I only have one video on that channel now. I do have a second video in the books. I'm currently editing it, but um, you can find me by my name, Sergio Kwan. If you just type that in the search, I think I'm like the only one that will pop up. Like, I'll be the first one to pop up because I think that name combination doesn't exist with anybody, any other account. So I should, think I should be fine. Not too sure. Yeah, well, I'll have it pinned and linked. I'll put your Instagram in there too as well if you want me to. That'd be uh, great, yeah. I'll, I'll leave it all pinned in the comment section and linked in the description of the video for you all to check it out. Uh, what are you going to be talking about on there though? I mean... I'm going to be talking uh, about, oh, I'm sorry, were you going to say something? No, go ahead, go ahead. Um, I'm probably, basically, I'm just going to be talking about my experiences in rehab and my road to recovery and probably talk about, you know, some jail stories that I have as well and other stories that I have from the outs because there's a lot. And I also, I'm really into cars, so that's probably going to be, I don't know if it's going to be on the same channel or a separate channel, but I, me and my friends fix up a lot of cars and race them sell them and do stuff like that so i'll have a video a channel on that as well you're damn right man at least yeah. you got a path you know you got a path to walk on uh and how long you been clean man i've been clean for three years four years the, the entire time that i've been out i've been clean so mm, like three and a half years that's excellent man mm -hmm. that's yeah. excellent can't go back to that bullshit you know no, what i mean definitely not definitely. you ain't got no kids yet no kids yet no uh, I, I am engaged the good old days <laughs> <laughs> nah these are great days man but that's what's up man just keep doing what you're doing uh you know good luck on that youtube and if you have any questions about it man you know i'm here and if i don't respond give me a day or two i will you know what i mean but uh if you need any help just let me know and ladies and gentlemen 
Stay the hell out of jail, especially in L.A. County. You don't want to be getting sliced up like a piece of bread for nothing like homeboy here. Definitely not. Shit. <laughs> Shit.